so do not mention your name as well as your mail id in the chat box since uh, it has been already linked this google meet is already linked to utterance so it will automatically take your utterance so don't bother about the utterance and all and one more request from our side is so i think we have all of you have received your mail so in that mail you have to press yes and then you have to enter to the meeting otherwise it will be difficult for us uh, in every time you have to admit you so one more request is you have to press yes in your mailbox in your gmail and then you can enter into the meeting thank you Hello, Mr. Madhivanan. Hello, Mr. Madhivanan. Ah, sir, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Ah, sir, hearing, sir, hearing. Ah, if you are able to talk about it, PPT. Ah, yes, ah, yes, sir. Ah, PPT, yes, sir. Now it is we are seeing, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay sir. Thank okay. you, thank you. Ah.
Sir, good morning, Narayana sir. Make it Narayan sir. Eh, yeah, good morning, good morning. Able. Sir, can you please uh, Hello? withdraw your presentation, sir, so that we will go with the uh, introduction of yourself and then we will go ahead, sir. Good morning to one and all present here. This is the second day of our program on nanotechnology and functional materials. Thank you for joining with us. Today morning in the first session, our resource person, Dr. P.S. Venkatanarayanan, Professor, School of Aeronautical, Hindustan Institute of Technology, Chennai, is going to deliver lecture on recent advances in nanocomposites and functional materials. Now let me introduce our resource person. Sara has completed a PhD with a specialization in nanocomposite materials and structures. She worked in Indian Air Force for 15 years at various locations in India. Total teaching experience is having 20 years. She has contributed in international journal publication eight uh, papers and the national journals in the two papers. He has specialized training undertaken during IAF service. He took a specialist training in Israel, Russia for surface to air missile system. He accompanied the Indian peacekeeping force. He has worked in 1987 to 1990 during Sri Lankan operations. He participated in Kargil War and Operation Vijay in 1999. I request our resource person Sir, kindly please proceed with your presentation, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Your presentation is visible, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Please continue, sir.
sir you can unmute and you can proceed sir yes your presentation is visible sir Sir, you have to unmute yourself and you have to speak, sir. Able to hear me now? No, yes, ah, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, yes. Okay. Very sad. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, I am very happy to be here in this occasion. Uh, it's a sponsored program by ASCP and it's a privileged uh, event. Uh, I, I am very happy to participate. Uh, I am also a participant on of you, like, and I am very happy to be here for presenting my specialized uh, topic today in front of you. Definitely, it will give you a very good amount of information as well as whoever is doing his research and further uh, any career advancement, it is going to be a uh, added uh, additive for your uh, career path. So I like to present uh, myself uh, with the specialized topic and advanced topic in the uh, material section, uh, nanocomposites and functional materials and today's trend advancement and uh, its extension to each and every field in the society as well as it's being coupled with our day-to-day -day life now. So I am present, I am, start, uh, I am starting a presentation. My name is Dr. Sangit Narayanan, Professor Hindustan uh, Institute of Technology and Science, uh, working in the School of Aeronautical Sciences. So uh, uh, this, this you can view, a uh, cup-shaped material. This cup shaped material is nothing but the formation of uh, uh, nano particles arranged in a cup and it is making a nano, uh, you can say, uh, uh, tubular structure. Uh, each, each layer is likely to have a cup shaped uh, uh, material, which is likely to form a, a whole tube. And the size of the tube is the size of the size of the tube is very very small and it is unimaginable size uh, everyone everyone in the session should mute uh, audio and video also i request all the participants uh, please mute your audio and video I request once again, please, sir. Otherwise, yes. uh, you will be expelled from the session. Kindly requesting, sir, please. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, please, uh, you can proceed, sir. Yes, sir. thank you. Yes. Okay. Now, you are seeing the cup-shaped uh, material, which is being stacked one over the other, and finally, it, it is going to form a, a conical uh, structure, uh, which is a, a nano-geometry. Uh, which is likely to be used everywhere. Uh, it's, you can call it as a hollow carbon nanotube. Uh, it is a hollow structure. It is going to have a triangular in shape, a conical shape, which is being stacked one over the other, which can be artificially you can do the stacking, or naturally also the stacking will be there. Natural stacking will be irregular. Artificially, if you are synthesizing uh, this for an artificial stacking, that uh, it, it is going to have a, a very... Uh, uh, good, good type of shape. So this is a carbon uh, nanotube, the schematic view. It is a cup-shaped tube. Now, come to the term nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is a very uh, a fascinating, uh, it's, a, it's going to be 
fashioned fascinated uh, and it is a booming area for our uh, a career as well as our knowledge concerns so everyone is trying to come into the nanotechnology side you cannot cause the application of the nanotechnology it's being extending its application to each and every part in the uh, society uh, right from the structural for a vehicle a ship building aircraft and so on and uh, it's being extending to the medical application even the cancer uh, application uh, this nanotechnology is being used uh, uh, then food preservation so like this many applications are there so this term nanotechnology was invented by tanikuchi in uh, 1974 and he has uh, what is the technology and engineering there is a difference between the technology and engineering technology is having its uh, 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 its a strategy how to process progress and uh, obtain the final application uh, level so that is called the technology engineering is likely to based upon the uh, uh, science principles on the basis of that engineering is going to be wide it is not being uh, uh, it, it can you can call it as a Uh, molecular level so you can you can get into the molecular level and you can find out its application the techniques we are involving in using this uh, particles for a functional application the difference is between the normal particle and the functional particle functional particle will give you the definite application uh, which way you want to have that you can create that is called uh, uh, functional material normal material many uh, types of materials are available why the specially the functional material is having a need means you can get the uh, application wherever uh, you want to have uh, you can uh, just catch the tailoring uh, application of the material suppose if you want to have a thermal application you can you can use the nano technology and uh, uh, you can convert the normal nano particle into the functional material functional particle so that you can get the uh, uh, temperature application material so you could have you would have come across uh, many type of temperature applications are being uh, uh, encountered uh, during our uh, day to day life uh, right from the kitchen material like a cooker and all uh, in previous day we were using a steel made steel made kadai where you are going to fry the things Uh, today it has come to the micro uh, oven uh, uh, level it has come to so the application is uh, in micro wave uh, uh, oven where the nano technology is being used so you can you can get the application as you want which way you want to go where you can get into the track now the nano technology is nothing but nano science uh, nano science means nano engineering you can get it the science is coupled with engineering technology is coupled with the strategy which way you want to have uh, that the uh, in aircraft bomber uh, in having two category one is a strategic bomber another one is the tactical bomber two types of bombers are there as far as the air force uh, fighter is concerned in this strategic bomber and uh, tactical bomber it's got to be a specific application you cannot use uh, tactical bomber to the strategic bomber you can use it uh, so that is so that is the uh, way the functional materials are being used okay now the nano science is nothing but the study of the phenomenon and manipulation of the material at its molecular level it is at the lowest level you are getting into you are you are going into the lowest level you are correcting the uh, things uh, what you want Uh, so that is that is going to have a very greater uh, uh, application uh, uh, whichever the way you want to have so that is the main thing as far as the nano technology is concerned uh, so uh, that is going to uh, uh, give you the functional type of material that i want to say here so it is going to be the nano meter level that is equal to the atomic level so the the unit of the atomic level is uh, going to be studied in terms of uh, armstrong no so it is going to have that armstrong is 10 to the power of minus 10 meters 
that is a nano uh, is going to have the size of 10 to the power of minus 9 meter so that is the nano size so at that particular size you are going to correct the thing that is very very important as far as the uh, perfection is concerned quality is concerned you can get the quality without adding any weight to the structures you can add the quality and the strength as you want that is the speciality of the nanotechnology now come to the uh, using the nanotechnology materials can be effectively made stronger that only i was telling just now lighter it, it can be made stronger but you need not to increase the weight whereas in alloys and other uh, applications you are increasing the weight of course you may ask dual aluminum that is aluminum alloy aluminum alloys are lighter of course but when you compare to the nano material aluminum alloy is heavier they say it is going to be a thousand times heavier than the nano material but the application level nano materials are having a stronger than your uh, normal day to day alloy so you cannot compare even the alloy to the nano material uh, 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 nano material uh, there, there are some alloys where nano materials are infused in order to enhance its uh, uh, technological properties so that is an induced in the normal alloy that is a special material called duralumin it is being extensively used in the aircraft applications the duralumin is nothing but an alloy of copper aluminum this is a base two material copper is 4% percent and aluminum is 96% there are uh, some other uh, materials of impurities are added Uh, in order to have a surface uh, hardening there is a surface hardening uh, uh, treatment is likely to be given for an aircraft material in the surface hardening nano materials are being infused in the surface level so they are called uh, uh, edge hardening so uh, at at par with the, uh, the current uh, requirement of the technology you can manipulate the material quality using the nano technology that is the important of uh, importance of uh, nanotechnology come to the next step. now you when, when i am talking about the uh, nanotechnology i have to talk about the composite material uh, as uh, i am also basically a mechanical engineer but i my route has diverted when i joined the air force so i have uh, taken my own path as an aero engineer so now what the as a mechanical engineer everyone may be knowing about the composite materials what is the difference between the composite materials and alloy both are looking alike composite is different alloy is different why is different names are being used the uh, someone is opening their mic kindly kindly close thank you uh, uh, you we, we must know what is composite material the composite material is nothing but the two or more different materials are combined integrated through a special process and you are making a, a unique material they are called a composite material there are two different materials are being integrated one is the reinforcement material another one is the binding material reinforcement material may be a, a nano particle there is called a particle infused that may be a fiber the fiber uh, reinforced then uh, what is going to be the binding material binding material is nothing but the uh, matrix or synthetic uh, binder they uh, you can call it as a synthetic binder the synthetic binder is being used to keep the fibers intact particles intact in its uh, mixture if the mixture is dried and it will be a material it can be used for many applications they are called the composite material or one more definition you can come to say here the composite is a combination of two or four different materials that are mixed in a effort to blend the best properties of the both so it is an integration what you are going to integrate in the composite material composite material is nothing but the integration of two different properties of two different materials and you are going to get ultimately a single material property that is going to have the combination of a fiber character and a binder character both will be there together they are called integrated material or infused material that uh, extensively used in many applications as on um, today every uh, life uh, of our uh, 
uh, uh, time you can you, you can uh, you can get into the usage of the composite material it's a fiber reinforced plastic plastic is a binder uh, fiber is a reinforcing material now this is all about the composite but there is a limitation for the composite material what is the limitation for the composite material properties of the material are highly anisotropic uh, it is very very complicated uh, structural quality anisotropic anisotropic is going to be the properties are going to be the different uh, different directions you know uh, a hell lot of is a infinite number of directions are there as far as the material is concerned each direction is likely to have different properties that is called anisotropic so in order to get the property in a particular direction is going to be very tough it is very challenging for engineers too. so that's the reason it has a composite materials are having a uh, limitation second one is the strength perpendicular to the direction of the alignment is considerably less uh, as uh, as the composite material is concerned reinforcement is likely to be laid in a plane and the binder is going to be uh, with uh, another uh, uh, perpendicular direction so the property in the perpendicular direction and property along the fiber direction is going to be different so that's the reason uh, the uh, uh, the the characteristics of the composite material is going to be weak is one of the directions which way is going to be the weak wherever uh, the reinforcement is not there so that will be easily uh, failure initiation is likely to be so that's the reason it's one of the limitations for the composite materials uh, you cannot induce as like you want the uh, properties in the uh, composite material so uh, for example functional properties we are, i am going to be concerned with the functional properties functional properties are optical properties of functional property and uh, you can say electrical and you can have a corrosion resistant all those things uh, you can say we are in tear resistant all those things are functional properties you can induce which way you want to have uh, that is the composition the composition is likely to have a different percentage of materials to be added into a singular singular material so the percentage of addition is going to have an influence on the properties so you cannot add as you like there is a, a, a hell of a lot of research happened uh, as far as the composition is concerned so if you want to have a good composition good material so proper and perfect composition is likely to be, likely to be initiated you should have the knowledge of combining the two materials in a correct proportion that is very very important now so that is that now when there is a limitation what is the other path to have our own research and to select our own uh, path what's the other uh, related uh, uh, path as nothing but the nano composite so we have to welcome the world of nano composite where it is extensively used you can you can prepare it uh, with your uh, uh, with your expertise and you can have the material of the desired quality so that is the speciality of the nano composite now come to the uh, one one desired property you can induce in the composite material the normal composite material and nano particle infused composite material two are different categories so one category is having a limitation another category we are going to see now so mechanically the term nano composite or nano technology nano composite is nothing but the using the nano technology we are going to produce a material that is being extensively used for the functional application especially for the functional application that's the reason the nano composites are being taken as a base material for the nano composites so uh, uh, there are two as i told you know nano effort composites nano infused composites two types of uh, 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 nano technology uh, influenced materials are available so we will talk about uh, both of them, these materials So mechanically the term nano composites are differing from conventional composites normal composites what we have seen in the previous two slides uh, in fact 
exceptionally high surface to volume ratio of the reinforcing and its exceptionally high aspect ratio is going to influence the functionality of the material so that is very very important we must know what is the surface to volume ratio how much is going to have uh, incorporated in order to make a material what is the volume of the material you are going to use and what is going to have the influence on the surface area uh, 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 this is going to give you the uh, functionality or functional uh, characteristics of the material now there is a problem existed as far as the telescope is concerned there is a hubble space telescope which is uh, which was being used extensively uh, in order to view the spatial objects in the space in a far away uh, objects can be viewed very effectively uh, due, through this uh, hubble space telescope a short key we can call it as a hsc this hsc was having extensive heating and it was uh, losing the data this loss of data is due to uh, uh, due to the heat it was late of late it was found like that but uh, the scientists and the researchers were uh, very confused which way we are able to uh, save our data through this telescope finally they could able to find the heat is extensively dissipated through this telescope and this extensive dissipation of the heat is uh, vanishing due to some of the data of the uh, hsc this uh, this being corrected by uh, adding the nanoparticle infused uh, material finally the heat was corrected and they could able to save the data of the telescope this is one example one more example i will give you you could have come across a kalpana chawla uh, she has lost her love li life because of the tragedy happened with the columbia space shuttle what happened everyone knows it the every uh, nook and corner the investigation has reached and the people are extensively knowing about the cause of the columbia space shuttle tragedy what happened to the columbia what happened to the columbia space shuttle when it was re entering into the space uh, into the atmosphere from the space and the leading edge of the aircraft was extensively heated because you know when the reentry is achieved through the uh, uh, through the uh, atmospheric shield it has to get into the very uh, very greater amount of thermal load uh, whichever the part is exposed to first so the uh, leading edge of the wing space shuttle wing is exposed to first initially to the uh, atmospheric shield then it is entering into the atmospheric shield an enormous amount of heat produced and whatever the ceramic tiles which was pasted in the leading edge has been separated because of the heavy thermal load that has been separated and the tragedy happened just before reaching uh, the earth seven minutes was uh, uh, seven minutes were left uh, by the time the tragedy happened so this is due to the ceramic tiles what now the space shuttles are being used with you know nano nanoparticles the carbon nanoparticles infuse the ceramic tiles the normal ceramic tiles is being used with uh, uh, carbon nanotubes infused uh, ceramic tiles hence they could be able to have this type of uh, separation of the tiles from the leading edge in interior part of the leading edge so that we can avoid the many types of uh, uh, problems we can solve using the nanotechnology so this uh, this is the second uh, 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 example i want to tell you about yes able to able to see my sharing able to see my ppt uh, uh, yes sir yes sir i request all yes. the participants uh, to pin the screen of our resource box So yes. pin to screen you can use so that uh, that will be uh, visible. I request uh, once again I request all our participants uh, please pin to our resource person display screen. It will be in the full form. Ah yes sir please sir you can proceed. Okay uh, uh, now it is visible na no? okay. Ah yes sir yes. Mm -hmm. Okay okay. Now again I will start. So this is th this is all the two just the example I have given you as far as the. influence of the nanoparticles in the uh, material they are all the, they are all functional material now come to the third one what is nano 
nano uh, is having a lot of uh, materials under its category what is the nano clusters nano clusters a collection of many nano particles together it is called agglomerated uh, particles together they are called the cluster cluster you know cluster is a, is a bunch bunch type of thing will be existing they are called the clusters so they are called the nano clusters first second one is the nano colloids nano colloids are uh, you can you can have a, 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 the a liquid phase stable liquid phase uh, there are there are two types of liquids you no know, phases when you are mixing a uh, Uh, anything any powder into a uh, water some powders will mix very correctly and homogeneous mixture you will get some powder will not mix so it is likely to be agglomerated or precipitated at the bottom that will go into the precipitating precipitating at the bottom of the container that is not uh, you cannot call it as a homogeneous mixture uh, when you mix a decoction with a milk you know coffee in the coffee you are you are mixing the decoction with the coffee or a milk you are getting a coffee that is called a homogeneous mixture homogeneous mixture is nothing but a mixture once the uh, different uh, liquids are mixed you know you cannot separate after that so that is mixed uh, uh, at its uh, molecular level it has gone into mixing with uh, completely with 100% mixing that is called 100% mixing and it is going to be stable if you keep coffee for days together because of the deterioration of the milk it may get uh, Uh, spoiled but otherwise uh, you cannot at any stage you cannot uh, separate the milk and the again degaussion into that so that is not possible as far as the uh, coffee is concerned they are called the homogeneous stable mixture but uh, it is not like that when you mix a oil with uh, water daily cast you cannot mix it that will be floating like a bunch it will be floating on the water surface so any time you can again separate the water and the oil separately so recently in russian uh, sea the, there was a oil spill and uh, uh, a hell of a lot of uh, hectare of uh, water surface was spoiled with the oil and then finally what they have done they have separated the surface part of it with the oil they have removed they are now still the work is going on in the russian uh, sea so uh, uh, so you can you can you know, many news that has come recently so that is called the colloids if you mix some of the nano particles you will get a very stable liquid so that the stable liquid one of the example is the magneto rheological liquid magneto rheological fluid or carbon nano particles infused liquid or any if you there are two types of nano particles one is the metallic nano particle another one is the non metallic nano particles metallic nano particle will not mix with the water so for that is a separate uh, special uh, liquids are required to mix the metallic nano particle to have a stable liquid but if the metallic nano particles are mixed with uh, water you will not get the stable liquid there is a possible precipitation under the liquid as uh, of so that is a problem so we should have a, a, a very stable uh, colloid liquid if it is so the case Uh, we can extensively use for the high temperature uh, thermal conductivity you can increase the fluid thermal conductivity you can extract the heat you can take away the heat uh, many of the electronic applications the nano fluids are used for uh, taking away the uh, heat produced in the nano circuits the in the electronic circuits so that is one of the uh, very functional application of the nano liquid now another one is the nano particle the nano particles are having a, if if there is a particle and the regular shape particle irregular shape particles two types of particles are there regular shape particles are uh, you can synthesize and you can make the regular shape and the irregular shape just you can make a nano particle uh, the particle shape will be the irregular and the irregular shape the particle you cannot use uh, uh, as you like anywhere else so it has to be a specific application so the synthesize and geometrically controlled nano particles can be used extensively uh, wherever we want to have uh, we want to create the functional properties so another one is the nano crystal nano crystal is nothing but uh, uh, it's a crystal type of structure uh, it's having a definite uh, uh, is the electronic configuration uh, as well as the electronic boundary or crystal boundary definite crystal boundary if there's a crystal you can ask me a question that 
that is likely possible crystal defect you know there are there are possible defects in the crystals uh, but a normal crystal when you infuse the nano particles nano part that can go into integrate with the uh, crystal boundaries and it will correct all the defects so at the crystal uh, boundary level correction is possible as far as the nano technology is concerned that's the reason uh, the nano particles are being extensively used now now come to the uh, different types of uh, uh, micro uh, different level of particles are used as uh, micro particles macro particles meso particles nano particles and so on eco particles uh, the particle can have the size of 10 to the power of minus you can put the x x may be a lakh also 10 to the power of minus 1 lakh that also like it have a particle size but we can reach only at the 10 to the power of minus 14 meter that size only you can now as on today it can be reached but there are extensive uh, research areas uh, which can be now focusing to the 10 to the power of minus 22 meters up to that there is there is a possible the research is going on in that particular Uh, that uh, but it is now uh, in the still in the uh, research stage now as far, as far as the particles concerned we have the macro size micro size meso size and nano size four types of particles we are extensively using as far as the nano technology is concerned so beyond which there is not going to be the other nano technology there is going to be the pico technology so some other technology name will be coming there okay now some someone is uh, uh, doing something uh, sir sir uh, sir please sir you can proceed sir no problem sir. okay okay, okay. Uh, now uh, now now these are all uh, uh, micro size macro size and uh, pico size uh, uh, size particles nano size particles many types of particles are there now those the uh, particles are uh, can be used in between the uh, boundary uh boundaries of the crystal boundary now we can see many types of you uh, think uh, 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 how how you are going to increase the toughness how you are going to increase the uh, uh, height of the mechanical properties then other like interface uh, control and uh, the which is like you have the lightest part uh, lightest way you can in, in use the material and high temperature mechanical properties at high temperature any material will lose its property everyone knows it high temperature application is a special application that a special type of particles a special type of materials are used this is advanced composite uh, advanced carbon carbon composite they are normally used for the high temperature application it is going to be as uh, like the uh, ceramic tiles the more than ceramic tiles will be very heavy when you go for uh, advanced uh, carbon carbon composite is very light uh it is likely to take up thermal load uh, more than 100 times than the normal ceramic tiles so that is uh, extensive use of you can have the intra tight inter tight uh, intra uh, 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 many types of uh, in infusing in the nano particles between the two boundaries that also can be visible so that that will increase high strength and reliability when you are doing uh, uh, uh inter type of in infusion of the nano particles between the two crystal boundaries so that is going to have uh, you can use for the high temperature mechanical applications you can go for the uh, you, you can increase the visibility and in the key, you can increase the super plasticity so you, these are all the functional applications of the nano particles through which you can get into the uh, uh many type of application and you can select your own application as you want now come to the nano composite as a multi scale system what are the different scales being used as far as the nano particle is concerned we have macro scale as we were talking uh, about the scale of the nano particle macro scale nano particle and uh, and the clustering of the nano particle that will uh, bring to the micro scale if, if the particles are being clustered you know if you take out one particle and measure its geometry that's going to have a micro level geometry so micro level particles will have the quality of agglomerating each other they will attract each other they will combine they will cluster together then uh, 
interface affected zones several to tens of nanometers so that that is likely the gradient property for example a strain gradient temperature gradient uh, uh, if, what is the temperature gradient uh, if you have the atmospheric uh, characteristics of our earth atmosphere and uh, initially uh, for certain altitude the temperature will uh, it can it can have the, the reduction of the temperature then the altitude increases but at a certain altitude the temperature is going to be constant again certain altitude the temperature will increase again certain altitude there is constant uh, uh, temperature again it will reduce so that is a atmosphere layer as far as the uh, uh, space flight and our, our aircraft flight is concerned so that, that, that is called the gradient zone temperature is reducing uh, and your altitude is increasing that is called the gradient so that way and the gradients are being uh, identified then then when you come to the uh, uh, polymer composites what is the polymer polymer is a plastic material is a binder synthetic 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 material or you can call the after you can say so this synthetic materials are being extensively binding capability and it is uh, plastic quality non corrosive all those things are there as far as the uh, polymer is concerned so this polymer can be used as a binding material as far as the uh, nano composites or nano materials are concerned you can make them with it as now come to the classification of the nano composite the nano composite what is what is uh, the type of uh, classification you can initiate it can have the polymer based nano composite non polymer based that's why i was just uh, i was talking about that. the polymer based and non polymer based non polymer based means uh, you can have any other binder other than the synthetic binder any other for natural binders are available the natural binder uh, what is the limitation for the natural binder natural binder is uh, bio degradable material the bio degradability is likely to initiate the deterioration in a very short duration of time so that is the reason it's having a non polymer based uh, materials are having the limitation now come to the wide variety we have uh, nano composites we can have the ceramic matrix nano composites polymer matrix nano composites polymer ceramic uh, then there's a combination two combination you can call them as a hybrid hybrid matrix elastomeric nano composites bio material so bio material is uh, degradable and environmental friendly and societal uh, uh, it, it is going to have uh, good uh, good ex- good imitation from the society the society wants bio degradable material today as of today the pol teams are being ba- being banned everywhere we are we are uh, trying to ban the uh, polythene polyethylene material because uh, degradability is very challengeable there it is likely to uh, pollute the environment and there is a challenge for the societal use so that's the reason uh, everyone is now asking for the bio degradable material now these are all the some of the uh, you can say types of the nano composites now so different types of nano composites we can have some example and which class it is metal ceramic polymer so these three category some uh, variety of examples are given one is the iron chromium uh, based uh, metallic there is a, uh, because iron is a cheaper material but chromium is a little uh, challengeable material but although it is uh, being used extensively for uh, uh, alloy steel steel alloy steel is an alloy actually where iron is the base material uh, copper is being in, induced chromium nickel vanadium so so many types of uh, materials are being uh, uh, mixed with the base material and different different proportion so this will be metal that is called that is called the class metallic class com, uh, nano composite then ceramic based material ceramic based material uh, the base is the silicon silicon based material will be coming in the ceramic category the polymer we have the two different uh, varieties of polymers one is uh, uh, one is uh, uh what one is uh, likely to have the thermoplastic another one is thermoset all the uh, thermoset layered silicates all those things are coming in the polymer uh, category 
So these are all, uh, you can say, extensively used as of today. In the day-to-day -day life, it has come into the uh, uh, come into our life. So that we we cannot avoid using all those materials. That is still the plastic materials are being used. Polythenes are used everywhere. You can see the, all the flowers and the packing is done in the polythene material. It is having a certain grade. So beyond that grade, we cannot use it. So now. You can say non-polymer based material, material. non-polymer based, we have, we have the metal, metal nanocomposite, non-polymer, polymer is not at all used here, polymer is a synthetic material, so that if you are not using that, we are going to save our environment, but availability we have to check, uh, that's very important, uh, so that's the reason uh, polymer based nanocomposites are extensively. Uh, used because it is a, uh, all molding and all easy and process is easy polymer based material but uh, non polymer based material the process cost and the other uh, related uh, uh, design and fabrication cost is going to be more now we can we can have polymer based nano composites we have polymer ceramic inorganic organic polymer uh, together used with organic and the organic hybrid nanocomposites are being used. So hybrid nanocomposites uh, along with the polymer based. So this is uh, extensively used as far as the um, polymer based nanocomposites are concerned. Again, you can, you can have polymer, polymer nanocomposites. Biocomposites are extensively uh, uh, now not used because it's a limitation. That's the reason the bio uh, composites are not being used. But uh, other applications, they are using the bio composites, like, uh, like uh, you can say, some train windows, you know, uh, windows, some other places in the buses, in the MTC buses in Chennai, MTC buses, some of the uh, panels are being with the bio uh, composites, materials are being used. Interior, interior thing, <coughs> some interior. So, FRC nano composites and application techniques. This is a very uh, elaborate type of topic where how the FRC nano composites are being used, where it is being used, what, how it is being fabricated, what is the characteristics uh, and experimental uh, techniques used to, to characterize this. All the things uh, will be coming under this. Now, there is a schematic of the preparation of the nano clay glass fiber epoxy composites using VARTM. The VARTM is nothing but vacuum assisted resin transfer molding. Uh, this is a uh, 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 modern technology, uh, vacuum assisted molding it is. So uh, resin, is well, resin will be put in a container. So this is a, this you can say, uh, uh, you can say the, uh, this is a setup in which resin will be used in a container. So this is the resin container. So when, when the pump is uh, uh, run, it will be sucked from there and the suction is likely to uh, fill the mold here and any excess resin will come and collect in the trap resin trap. So this is going to have uh, 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 the easy setup, like set up this uh, likely to uh, uh, set up facility uh, and the cost of the setup is likely to be less uh, when you compare it to the other uh, 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 fabrication cost, technique cost. So this, uh, finally, you'll get the mold in the fashion. So it is one of the techniques, fabrication technique. The second technique is that uh, you can say compression molding process. The compression molding process is nothing but using a separate compression molding machine, and you have to separately make the uh, matrix. You have to prepare the fiber, and uh, all those things have to be kept in a uh, in a compression molding, this is, a, this is called the compression molding. Here, the molds are being compressed by an external force. If the compressive force is applied enormously, so we can have different types of uh, specification of the compression molding machine, right from the 10 uh, kilonewton to, uh, you can say 1000 kilonewton uh, compression molding machines are available. So depending upon the requirement, we can uh, select the machine and you can set up even uh, our own setup in our uh, facility and we can uh, make use of them. This is going to be the compression molding technique. So one of the techniques is uh, a compression molding technique. 
uh, this is uh, every industry is having this type of uh, setup yeah uh, because this setup is uh, easy and uh, user friendly and you need not have any uh, type of uh, background knowledge in order to operate this type of machine now why the polymer nano composites are unique because as i was telling you know polymer nano composites are uh, extensively used as on today everywhere uh, right from the you can say food preservation to uh, medical application so extensively the polymer based nano composites are used so increase in electrical breakdown strength of the polymers so that is one of the reason uh, the uh, polymer uh, nano composites are being used melting temperature color magnetization other, other related functional capacity can be increased you can increase this type of capacity you can increase the uh, melting temperature uh, you can increase you can you can induce the color as you want which type of color you need you can you can magnetize because as a plastic plastic is a non magnetic same material but uh, when you are infusing the nano particles the specific type of nano particles you can magnetize it nowadays uh, electroplating that's called the polymer nano composite electroplating is also being carried out you can you can deposit the some of the metallic particles on the nano composite material using the technology of electroplating electroplating both the both the anode and cathode should be a metallic no but in this you can have the cathode or anode whichever whichever the things you want to have uh, you can use either one is uh, 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 composite material uh, how will it be used you can initialize the electric properties if you induce the electric property you can have the electroplating quality you can induce it as uh, you can do it in the metallic plate interacting zone between the two zone the interaction will be there among the material itself it will it will have a dialogue between between each and it will expose the finalized uh, data which is required for you that you can extract the data they, they are called the uh, smart materials they are called the interacting material smart materials are nothing but interacting material uh, to whom it will interact it will interact with the apply the load the environment the ambient condition other things it will interact with each other finally it will come out it will protect so final what is ultimate uh, 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 ultimate uh, requirement of this finally we have to be safe you know even today in the covid 19 situation the masks are being produced you know in the mask they are coating some, some special coating is done uh, that coating is likely to avoid the covid uh so uh, 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 affecting uh, with the people so uh, these things are uh, even uh, coming in the covid 19 situation the nano particles nano technology is likely to be used extensively uh, in order to find out the vaccine all those things the nano technology is extensively used you can you can come to know day to day, -to -day news are being uh, aggressively coming in order to have uh, uh, specific application in order to protect ourselves from this uh, current situation so far that nanotechnology is to be used like to be used extensively now now come to the different application so hell a lot of application as i was telling nanotechnology is having a uh, you can say uh, in the uh, you can say infinite number of uh, applications in different directions uh, so uh, some of these if i just tell weapons in air force the weapons are being uh, reserved as well as being coated with the nano particles why this coating is being done external influence should not be there for example uh, uh, a charge the explosive charge you know the explosive charge is very very sensitive uh, to the atmosphere if the temperature increases the explosive charges will likely to get fired so how will you protect it how this uh, bomb them and other related uh, things are being uh, safe loaded from the influence of the atmosphere so they will be covering uh, with a special container container is internally coated with uh, nano particles and the internal nano particle coating is protecting it uh, uh, from the influence of the 
uh, other uh, atmospheric related parameters so that the other uh, explosives are being safe loaded so every application the nanotechnology is being utilized now in mechanical terms nano composite differs from the conventional composite material due to the exceptional high volume pressure this which i have seen already then how the uh, what do you mean the surface area why the surface area is playing a major role as far as the uh, nano particle is concerned now there are uh, two types of uh, if not, not even two types there is many types of that so only two types i am going to say one is the surface contact another one is the point contact which contact you will prefer in order to have a, a good uh, binding capability point contact or uh, surface contact anyone can answer a yeah, common question thrown to the participants will you prefer will you will you prefer point contact or surface contact in order to increase the uh, binding capability point i think contact, it is surface surface, surface contact sir Because exactly I exactly so surface contact is very essential as far as the con i can say binding capability is concerned binding why the binding is uh, required as far as the material is concerned when you are apply a compressive load your uh, your material the crystal boundary is not slip with each other this is during the compressive load when you apply a tensile force it's not separate up from the each particle particle has to be binded in such a way so you, you when you apply a compressive load when you apply a, a tensile load your your particles should not be separated so in order to avoid the separation the particle has to have a more surface area more volume more surface volume so that it will be having a good contact and you can increase the property so that way everywhere you can see the surface area surface area uh, 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 as far as the particle contact is concerned now this is the way i want to tell you the things uh, which are uh, likely to work out when you make a material so you have to select uh, the more surface area uh, uh, type of material uh, uh, particle so that it will be having a good contact with each other integration is perfect otherwise a, a irregular integration will be there and it will not get the binding capability as far as the property is concerned so nano composite is a multi phase material and its uh, dimension is in nanometers that is the nano particle size of the nano particle and the finalized material which is coming out of that will be corrected and induced with a special property that is the nano composite and nano material uh, what is what is the phase your phase is a physically distinct that you are knowing very very different phases are the gaseous phase liquid phase and the solid phase uh and uh, other uh, phases uh, you can integrate the uh, solid and liquid phase together you can uh, you can get the uh, different phase together which uh, you can have have a uh, integrated phases uh, that is uh, uh, going to have uh, influence in the nano material preparation so phase influence here is one of the uh, greater uh, challenging part as far as the engineers are concerned material man is concerned now uh, fabrication there are there are two, two types of technology you could have come across one is a powder technology powder powder uh, uh, coating no? uh, powder coating you were very very could have seen many of today's application all the metallic tubes and other things are coated with powder powder coated material uh, what, what do you mean by this that's called the powder technology another one is the polymer precursor these are all the some preparation technique for the uh, nano composite so powder means you cannot take i cannot select as you like the powder size you have to uh, you have to increase the size of the powder so the powder has to have a, a nano particle size then only you can call it as a nano technology a nano particle so powder has to be made first so a nano geometrical powder how will you make it so there are many types of techniques used to make the powder so uh, here here there are two types of uh, techniques used one is the flow you can say if you want to make a nano particle 
mixed with this uh, if you are mixing aluminum oxide na and uh, silicon carbide and then you want to get a nano composite how will you make this two uh, together you have to make a nano particle or out of this aluminum nano particles you have to make uh, then you have to make the silicon carbon nano particles and at a pre defined process has to be adapted in order to make a aluminum oxide influence or infused silicon carbide nano composite so this will be having a greater application aluminum oxide is a, you can say is a, it, it is a, a, it is a powder which is not having a, 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 a size is macro size you can say macro size to uh, micro size but you have to make this aluminum oxide to a nano particle size how will you make it there is a process called the ball milling ball milling process it has to be uh, ball milled for a certain time time is to be fixed then you can make this size into the uh, nano particle size you can infuse under hard pressing so how how is this being made hard press under a temperature of 1700 degrees centigrade in the nitrogen environment so if you are using this type of technique so you can make the aluminum oxide infused with the silicon carbide and nano composite it is having an extensive usage very hard it is very hard aluminum is soft material you can make it hard by using this so that is uh, that is a, a hardness you are increasing hardness and you are you are increasing the toughness of the material you can increase the strength of the material uh, i think you know what is the difference between the strength and the stress strength is different stress is different uh, i think you know the difference between these two extensively uh, many places we are using stress extensively many places we are using the strength so that is very important you have to know it then second process is uh, another type how will same aluminum oxide silicon carbon nano composite can be made so other uh, type of technique that technique is going to be called as a pyrolysis technique and hard pressing there are two two separate techniques are being used to here so this uh, two techniques are uh, very uh, effectively used for making the nano composite now now come to the uh, polymer clay nano how the morphology of this uh, nano composite will be looking into one is the intercalated uh, category you will be getting intercalation intercalation means some bunch will be there clusters you can see the some clusters along with the irregular shape of uh, integration this is called irregular integration in this is called intercalation another one is the uh, yes uh, another one is the uh, uh, is uh, intercalation and uh, folliculation both are together uh, existing so you can see the difference between the intercalation and the intercalated and folliculated uh this uh, 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 flocculated there's a there's there a difference you can see the you can observe the difference if you can observe the difference in the microscopic condition you can use the scanning electron microscope or uh, any other field electron microscope you can uh, observe the difference between this and you can declare this is a exfoliated or intercalated or uh, flocculated uh, particle like this you can declare yourself the exfoliation means uh, is completely separated particle the black particle is a nano for example nano particle and this this particular uh, you can say dull gray type of thing as uh, a line is a binder so if these two are if the binding is not proper here you can say the, it is very smoothly it is being uh, separated this called exfoliation so one more thing is there as far as the uh, nano particle is concerned called agglomeration agglomeration is more than the intercalation intercalation some particles are having a cluster the agglomeration most of the nano particle will be together and precipitated at the bottom surface so you have to separate it there is a different technique to separate the nano particle from each other so that that this is very very extensively uh, uh, you have to characterize the material okay. now now you see the nano composite Uh, uh how the nano composites are being uh, 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 separated and how this is being uh, categorized each phase separated this, this this is coming to the category of uh, micro composites you cannot call it as a nano composite 
nano composites are uh, how the nano composites are it is a totally if there is not any blunt or uh, bunch or cluster uh, present in the uh, material if the material is containing clusters and bunches then you cannot call it as a nano composite it has to be called it as a uh, you can a clustered or agglomerated composite it will be uh, as good as a micro composite composite or macro composite composite type so you cannot call them as a nano composite then intercalated type of thing you can call them as a nano composite there is a, some geometrical uh, identification you have to carry out then you can call it as a nano composite now this is in the middle middle group you can call them as a nano composite and may not be sometimes it will be coming this side or going that side so it is in the intermediate side now exfoliated you can definitely you can call them as a nano composite it is a homogeneous mixing is possible between the particles and the binder so if it is ensured if you are ensuring the exfoliated part, uh, fabrication then you can call them as a uh nano composite now uh, this is a different state uh, of uh, 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 different phases by in which the nano composites can be uh, infused in different phases solid phase also you can induce you can liquid solution you can gas state you can mix the gas state and you can condense it you can make it as a, uh, a, a nano composite so different processes now we can say composite materials made of two or more uh, uh, constituent material with a significantly different physical and chemical properties whereas the nano composites are having uh, size at least one of the one of the constituents must be nano particle size then only you can make a nano composite either you will be having a polymer or binder as a macro and the particle infused inside this binder should have the nano size that is important come to the uh, the um, nano particles definition once more i uh, like now we can you can define the nano particle what is nano particle what is a nano composite the definition of a nano composite is broad and now now you are having a wide uh, 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 your your knowledge is wide and now to have a definition correct definition for this so broad and significantly to include a large variety of systems such as one dimensional two dimensional three dimensional particle maybe amorphous uh, material made of distinctly dissimilar components and mixed at the nanometer scale that is important so any one of this materials must be having a nano material size that's the uh requirement we need to have a constituent have at least one dimension in the nanometer scale either it can have any one of this uh, should be in the nanometer scale now come to the properties of the nano composite what is the what is likely properties of the nano composite material the tiny particles infused in the uh, nano composite will be having a higher larger surface area uh, again the surface area has come into the picture so we should ensure the particle should have the high surface area then large surface area enables the good adhesion this only we are talking about so it improves the mechanical performance of the parent material then better transparency due to the small size then uh, it can it can go for the good optical properties you can induce the optical properties by the nano composite nano technology now come to the uh come to the next slide here now you can see the nano composites are multi functional material or multi functionality how the materials are likely to have the multi functionality they can call them as a technological property of the material now you can you can have a smaller pillar size and still again uh, high surface to volume ratio so surface must be taken care and when you are talking about the nano particle surface area is the one of the parameters you have to look into when you are buying a nano particle you have to immediately uh, take the particle into the laboratory and you have to check its surface area how much is is the surface area whether it is likely to have a good quality of the surface 
are coarse surface. There are two types of surfaces, as you know, a very smooth surface and coarse surface. Smooth surface particles are also available that will be slipping, slipping each other. That won't have a, a good connection between. Coarse surface area will be having a good connection with good integration of it. Uh, that is uh, to be seen under the uh, microscopic uh, condition. The mechanical properties you can increase. Uh, where, how will you increase the mechanical properties? The strength will be increasing. You will not increase the weight. Uh, then you can increase the uh, property like ductility, and you can increase the toughness, hardness, and malleability. Uh, you can have uh, uh, a very good uh, impact resistant, uh, fire retardant quality. So, like this, you can you can you can uh, just list out many applications. Now, now, if you see, if you take the stress strain curve for a traditional material, then uh, center one blue is the nano composite material, and bottom black one is the polymer material. Then you are mixing these three, so you will get a, a property in between these two. So that is that quality is enough. Traditional material, no, uh, many places you may not be able to use it. The polymer material, many places you may not be used. When you are missing this two, you can reach to most of the applications. Now, advantages using the nano composite. Uh, uh, nano particles, nano composites are found in the natural. It is uh, found in uh, uh, so on, uh, small, very very large size uh, edible sea snail, a balloon, and some of the bones. It's having a nano particle, nano composite. That is a nano particle, nano composite. Advantages. What is the uh, different advantages of using the nano particles? Greater tensile and structural strength. Structural strength is a bending strength. So as far as the aircraft is concerned, you know, a wing is a beam, cantilever beam. So bending strength must be there for as far as the wing is concerned. As far as an airplane is concerned, the aircraft wing is a major component that produces the lift that sustains the entire weight of the airplane. So wing has to be ultimately fabricated and made, manufactured. So for which uh, uh, the material scientists are having the challenges to find a suitable and proper material as, well, as far as the airplane wing is concerned. Then it reduces the weight, but without losing its performance, you can reduce the weight. So that is required as far as the airplane is concerned. Then increase dimensional and uh, stability. Dimensional stability is you can increase the dimensional stability at various uh, loading conditions. Improved gas barrier properties and flame retardant quality. Flame retardant quality, as on today, is very much required. In many places, fire accidents are happening, and the material used in many places may not be able to retard the fire. Or uh, fire retardant quality or uh, fire resistant quality. It has to resist the fire or it has to retard the fire. Resisting is different, retarding is different. You know the difference with the resisting and retardation. Resisting is stopping and, and blocking. And retardation is not only blocking, it is putting off also to greater extent. That is called retardant. Retardation. You are, you are going back and the fire is initiated, the initiation of fire is uh, to be put off till the completeness is achieved. That is called the retardant quality. That is required. Improved mechanical property and electrical conductivity. In the aircraft, you know, many components are there. When the aircraft lands, you know, static electricity has to be dissipated through the ground. How is this being achieved? Either you have to use the metallic, comp metallic particle, metallic uh, component, so that the electrical conductivity may not be induced. Naturally, the electrical conductivity will be there. But how they are inducing in the aircraft as the conductivity? Because of the uh, nanoparticles, infused tires are used. They are called uh, tubeless tires. And there are linings in the tires, uh, which is uh, highly conductive, electrical conductive. And that is uh, static electricity is being dissipated to the ground, discharged to the ground by this. Tire itself. In the olden days, in before World War II and all, and after there is a long chain will be uh, let out when it is landing. That will come and touch the ground first, and the electricity will be discharged. 
that was the uh, old trend the new trend is even the plastic material itself being uh, made into the conductive material so that is uh, that now uh, 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 chemical conductivity uh, then chemical resistant uh, the for the corrosion corrosion resistant quality is also induced much so you have fourth nano composite how now next category so far you have seen the nano composite now Uh, it is being include fr nano composites what do you mean by fr nano composites the fiber continuous fibers are used as far as the composite is concerned and also it is being uh, used with the matrix matrix is being infused with nano particles so uh, sir that, excuse me sir sorry to disturb you sir yes yes sir uh, sh- uh, shall i shall we go for any break or uh, shall we continue sir No, no, you can because I don't have any problem. You can go for a break and come back. Ah, uh, uh, no, no, it it depends. It was, it uh, was, it was wish. Uh, no, it is now. It is eleven fifteen. Is going to be time. Ah, eleven twelve, eleven fifteen. So I can yes, continue. Sir. Still, still forty minutes are there, no? So I can continue. Ah, Absolutely okay. no problem. Okay. So sir. if it is, if this uh, break is given again, reassembling time will be taking. Uh, ah, so ah, that will yes, be better. Sir. So, okay. So far we are over. Okay. Thank you. So I'll ah. finish it up. Uh, uh i request all, all the participants uh, we will take some health break time just to 5 minutes again we will assemble 11 18 or 11 20 we will assemble okay here okay uh, okay okay, okay sir. thank you sir thank you sir. So we can hear. Uh, we can come up to ten minutes. Huh? Five to ten minutes. i request uh, all the participants please uh, don't share your screen even in the break time also i request all the participants uh, please uh, don't your uh, share your screen even in the break time also kindly request it otherwise you will be expelled from the admin team thank you for your cooperation thank you sir
can we can we start now mr madhivan sir yes sir go proceed yes, sir can you yes, start sir. yes sir sir uh, myself guru mahesh sir i am the co i am also one of the coordinator can proceed sir can i start now uh, uh sir uh, please sir please sir we can person we can continue sir please okay uh, I request, Again, I uh, uh, yes sir i request uh, yeah. all the participants uh, to join with us uh, now we are okay ah yes sir oh, thank you uh, uh thank you for uh, rejoining uh, this meeting so i am uh, again uh, proceeding this further to the uh, frp nano composites what do you mean the frp nano composites the fibers are uh, continuous fibers uh, composites are made when the composites are being made during the time of fabrication the matrix is being infused with the nano particles a desired nano particle which one you want uh, that particle can be infused in the matrix stage then you can uh, fabricate the uh, frp nano composite in the frp nano composite one is the fiber reinforced uh, mat uh, material fiber fiber material will be there apart from that uh, it's being infused with the nano particle that is the speciality so there is a double integration of the reinforcement one is the nano particle reinforcement another one is the fiber reinforcement two types of reinforcements are being uh, obtained and that gives you the ultimate uh, quality uh, which is uh, desired for any specific application for example nano frp filler Uh, well, for example if for the production of ca carbon fiber reinforced plastic cfrp uh, with the nano fillers so that is a three phase material matrix phase another one is the fiber phase for example if for the carbon fiber reinforced plastic cfrp with the nano fillers You are able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Proceed. Sorry to disturb you, sir. You are not seeing your presentation, sir. Please, sir. Able to hear me? Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Voice is clear, sir. Yes, yes. Oh. Uh, when uh, you you are you are making the fiber reinforced uh, material uh, there are three phase material it is one is uh, fiber another one is the binder another one is the uh, uh, nano particle so these three phases is likely to give you uh, added uh, property to the material so 
you can you can increase the property as you like uh, uh, with the fiber reinforcement. What is the glass fiber reinforcement? Carbon fiber reinforcement. Then uh, you can say Kevlar fiber reinforcement and hybrid fibers. You can you can change the, you can mix the two fibers together in a matrix that also can be used. When when you are uh, taking up the uh, 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 material preparation, the preparation phase itself uh, you can check whether the phase is uh, correctly made or not uh, under the microscopic uh, view. So that is. The, you can correct the errors during the fabrication stage itself. So when you make the complete material, then you find the error, uh, you cannot correct. So you have to ensure the material uh, should be made in such a way in the, in the initial stage itself uh, to be corrected. As like a Japanese uh, bird, you know, zero defect program. So uh, when you adapt the application of the material, you would adapt the zero defect program that is likely to give you the error-free material. So that is uh, the uh, FRP composites. Application is many applications are there. Some of the applications I listed out. I will not go deep into this. Application, uh, as far as the functional application is concerned, producing the batteries with the greater power output. So nowadays, uh, as we are likely to face the depletion of the fuel, uh, we have to rely upon the battery operations for the cars and other uh, social vehicles. So in which you have to increase the greater output of the battery. Otherwise, we cannot uh, uh, face the problem in future. So we have to be uh, adapting the uh, future challenges. We have to face the future challenges and uh, we have to visualize the future uh, challenges and you have to get ready yourself now itself. That is important. The speeding of the healing process of the broken bones. So nowadays, uh, many accidents are happening on road. Many people are being multi-fractured and the recovery from the fracture is taking long time. So six months you have to be in bed. You cannot move your limbs. So for that, there is a, a nano application uh, which is likely to cure this joint of the bones as quick as possible and we can walk uh, and we can uh, recover as fast as possible. Another uh, application is producing the structural components with the high strength to weight ratio. That is very very important as far as the flying vehicle is concerned. So that also being achieved by incorporating the third phase that is the nanoparticle phase. Then using the nano composites to make flexible batteries. There are flexible batteries, you know. Solar batteries nowadays available flexible battery. You can fold it. You can put it in a very smaller space, and you can you can uh, recover the energy from that. You can uh, take the flexible batteries outside. You can recharge from the uh, sunlight. You can bring it, fold it, put it to the container. You can reuse it. So the this is possible only by the uh, only by the uh, nano nanoparticles. So nanoparticles nowadays is dominating in many uh, commercial applications like car parts, energy preservation, and packaging. And then uh, there are different coatings, as I told you know, in the, uh, you have to safeguard the explosives explosive coatings and many other applications this is being used so this is many different pressures you can see this is energy uh, uh, sector and the car parts maximum percentage is being used when you compare it to our other applications then this is wide, very widely i have elaborated the uh, lightweight sensors with the nano composites you can use the lightweight sensors in the uh, present uh, technology cars, you know, uh, uh, like uh, Lamborghini cars, which is inside uh, using 1,300 and more sensors being used. Uh, it, these sensors are very, very small in size. That uh, is being used with nanoparticles. 
So nanoparticles are having a, a very uh, extensive uses as far as the sensor is concerned. And when you go to the uh, uh, curing of the tumors na, in the body, medicinal application, surgical application, and curing the uh, chronic diseases. So all these things are being uh, uh, taken by the technology that is nanotechnology. Now, so this is having a very, very, very wide application. So I don't want to elaborate much. If I elaborate, we won't be having time to. So a lot many things to talk about the application of the nanoparticles. So synthesis, how do you synthesize this nanoparticles? This is the one of the challenging tasks for the researchers, research scholars, and the career advancers. Like they already uh, PhD completed, uh, they are uh, likely to build up their career. They have to know how to synthesize it. Many people are knowing as of today, but still it has to be uh, taken care. If the listening is effective than the speaking. So that's why the God has having two ears and one mouth. You have to talk less, listen more. So that is the reason uh, we are having two ears with us. Now, uh, we have the gas phase synthesis. Then we have a chemical vapor condensation or chemical vapor deposition. Condensation is deposition. Then combustion flame synthesis. It is called pyrolysis. Then liquid phase synthesis. It is a liquidizer. Uh, so this is uh, cyaniding. Cyaniding is one of the processes. Uh, you can have the deposit of the nanoparticles into the surface. Now, other uh, other uh, type of synthesis are mechanical deformation and uh, thermal recrystallization. So these are the some of the uh, synthesis processes for the nanoparticles, nanocomposites. The chemical vapor deposition. How do you have the chemical vapor deposition? The chemical vapor deposition, nothing but the depositing the uh, nanoparticle into a, a container uh, which will collect the nanoparticle at the end of this particular process. Uh, what is that particular thing uh, doing here? Chemical vapor deposition. Precursors, precursor are being uh, burnt and sent into the uh, chamber where it can be different zones are available uh, additional heated reaction zone then rapid cooling zone and condensation zone so in the in the rapid cooling the particle is almost condensed then in the powder collection zone where it will be collected in a container then it has to be again synthesized again you have to go into the some of the surface treatments has to be done as far as the nanoparticle is concerned. Generally, you will get the uh, active nanoparticle. There are two types of nanoparticles. Again, one is the active particle, another one is the passive particle. Passive particle you cannot use. It will not be having any quality. You have to make it to the active, then only you can use that. Now, another one is liquid phase synthesis. So here, also this is this also one of the techniques uh, in order to make the nanoparticle. Another one is it, it's having a, a wide uh, uh, applications. It is easy and so on. Now come to the multifunctional uh, polymer nanocomposites fabrication technique. One is the electrospinning. Another one is the suspension polymerization. These two types of uh, uh, fabrication techniques are used as far as the multifunctional nanocomposites are concerned. Let us see what is that. Electrospinning is mostly many times it is being uh, used, many places it is being used, many industries are using this in order to make it. We have in Chandigarh, one of the industries, they are making the uh, carbon nanoparticles. Then another one is this suspension polymerization. The another synthetic method, the uh, wide range of nanoparticles can be, uh, can be made into a nanocomposites. Characterization of the nanocomposites. What do you mean by the uh, characterization? You have to study the surface. You have to study the uh, interboundary quality of the nanocomposites so that you can ensure the quality assurance is nothing but the characterization. You have to assure the quality so that it can be used for the specific application. One is the field emission type of scanning. You have to use the scanning electron microscope 
and you can uh, study the properties study the surface quality study the uh, uh, size of the tube size of the particles what is the nature of the particle it is a randomly uh, oriented or it is aligned many types of things are there as far as the uh, characterization is concerned because each and everything is going to play a major role as far as the uh, properties of a parent material is concerned now these nanocomposites are characterized by field emission type of scanning electron microscope electron microscope it is two types of electron microscopes are there one is field emission scanning electron microscope another is high resolution scanning electron microscope there are two types so you have to select which one is likely to be then third one is the transmission electron microscope it is an effective types of microscopy then this also having two types one is the high resolution and uh, high uh, tension hd tem hd high tension trans transmission electron microscope field uh, emission transmission electron microscope high resolution hr tem a resolution transmission electron microscope in optical mi microscopy this also optics also is a effective technique optical techniques then differential scanning colorimetry this also dsc this also being used to characterize uh, characters common uh, spectroscopic so this is some of the techniques they are using to characterize so i have listed some of the characterizing techniques each one we will see here electro spinning this is one of the production technique of the Uh, nano composites by right? uh, a special technique is called electro spinning technique here uh, what is being that uh, a syringe is used to inject the polymer and there is a, a needle which is having a nozzle small uh, you can say micro nozzles this micro nozzle will eject the polymer solution into a collector the collector can be collecting the uh, Uh, nano fibers and which can be further used for the use and it can be used to dry you have to dry this you have to make a stable particle stable uh, material then only you can use it that that's why i'm telling uh, active material you have to make it to the active material so this is the schematic of a electro spinning technique then some of the morphologies for the field emission scanning electron microscope images so you can you can you can just see 1 micrometer and 5 micrometer the difference between this you can some more uh, clarity you can get into the particle here so this this is the 5 micrometer this is the 1 micrometer so this is a two types of uh, images which is uh, uh, telling you the how the surface is is a thicker surface is a lighter surface is there is any break in the surface if there is a break still Uh, the uh, problem is going to exist you know you have to ensure the continuity of the surface here effectively so that's the reason we are synthesizing we are characterizing the uh, particle in many stages now tem image now you compare this sem and tem images tem images you can see some more uh, bigger images and surface is clearly visible here so you can see the clear visibility of the structure surface structure so the tem uh, characterization is also very one of the important whether it is a tube or it is a solid uh, if the surface is regular or irregular what may be the size of the surface you can say 100 nanometer is 100 nanometer size you can say different uh, posture different uh, angles you can see the surface different uh, orientations also you can see is there any 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 branches any 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 type of protrusion in the surface is there any gap or any break or any type of holes uh, hole is a true and true hole or blind hole all those thing you can check and you can even evaluate the size of the break size of the discontinuity all those things you can uh, characterize yeah now some images of the some of the prepared uh, 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 techniques some some of the techniques micro spheres and you can see the Uh, sizes different in the different sizes likely to give you the clarity of the surface these are all the balls then this is a nano composite when you exposing this to the field emission uh, scanning electron microscope then you can get the clarity exact more clarity you get now now you can see this 
some images of the fracture part of the you can say polyvinyl acrylic uh, you can say nwc and the infused uh, micro uh, composites that the spheres so if there is a sphere breakage you can come to know how the breakage is initiated then how this is from the small surface is exposed here how the surface is being exposed here from here it is exposed here so that is the very is a 250 nanometers is a 25 micrometer size so the difference is going to give you the clarity of the surface it is a it is kind of a fracture surface clarity you can see how the fracture happened is there any bridging or is there any uh, matrix breaking uh, is it a brittle break or a ductile break or a, a different types of uh, alias surfaces are you can view you can view that now it is a optical micrograph of a microsphere the how the difference between opticality is give you the more clarity towards if it is being is a 100 micrometer if you go to the 250 nanometers it's uh, i uh, i was having i forgot to uh, insert the figure here so that will be having more clarity the rings will be very exclusively you can view now come to the the conceptual diagram of a single walled carbon nanotubes this is a conceptual diagram so this diagram will be like this so it is a single wall tube this is a you can say multi wall you can say uh, you can say uh, concentric tubes the tube once tube is inserted into the other tube what may be the gap say say gap also you can measure 0.36 nanometers is going to be the gap so this way you can characterize you can uh, you can geometrically you can verify you can all those you can uh, view as far as the nanoparticle is concerned now types of nano sensors how the nano sensors are being uh, characterized how you view the nano sensors you can say you can say nano processes everything it means the names you know uh, uh, you can say names and names two types of branches are there and it, this is extensively used in many sensor applications you know it okay. uh, so the types of sensors you can say physical sensors then you can say chemical and you can say biological sensors so physical sensors, physical nano sensors, there you can go for uh, uh, the, uh, wherever you want to measure the mass, so you can measure the pressure, force, and displacement. The physical sensors that are to be used in order to extract the data. Then chemical sensors, chemical composition, you can uh, sense. You can molecular dimensions, molecular distances between the two molecules. Then concentration, how much is, how many molecules are there in a small area? That also you can count. If you go for the biological uh, nanosensors, there you can antibody antigens, you can view. And then interactions, then uh, this antibody antigen interaction, that also, that way you can go into the view. The DNA and RNA interactions. So the COVID-19 or Corona, Virus is the RNA virus. You can you, you are knowing better than me. I know it because uh, the RNA, how the interaction between the two RNAs in a uh, in a system that is uh, that can be uh, sensed by these sensors. So, so this is enzyme interactions. So, so all these things is possible for uh, a human being when they are using the nanotech. A high resolution image, then you can say 10 images. You know, 10 uh, images. This is a uh, see how the nano rods, this is called nano rods. So, this is the high resolution uh, images. So, you can you can even find the gap between this impurities. You can point out what is the impurity, uh, what type of uh, shape of the impurity is spoiling the quality of the material. That way, you can go into visualize it. Now come to the functional applications. There are many functional applications. One is everyday materials and processes. Every day we are uh, encountering the applications of the nano composites. Then electronics and IT applications. So many electronics field completely you can say almost 100% electronic field is uh, now depending upon the nanotechnology. The medical and health care. Now we are entering into the health care. Every country in the globe is uh, 
uh, is uh, uh, very worried about uh, the vaccine for COVID-19. Then energy applications, energy storage, energy release, all those applications. Nowadays, many many nuclear uh, uh, disasters are happening you know, in the nuclear reactors. Uh, the emission of the nuclear radiation. So it can be controlled. You can control all those things. In environmental remedy, how you are going to correct the environmental fault using the nanotechnology? That is also to be uh, used here. Transportation benefits. What do you mean by transportation benefits? Drug carriers, you know, carriers, some of the carriers, the medium, the nanotechnology is being used. Now let us see very extensively everyday materials and processes. What do you mean by this? Nanoscale additives are surface treatments of a fabric. Suppose we are using our fabric, you know, uh, uh, you can say six months you cannot use continuously the normal fabric. That will tear up. When you are using the nanoscale additive uh, infused uh, fabric, uh, surface treatments you know, fabric, that will come and it won't uh, lose its uh, quality. That is called uh, uh, additive uh, surface treated uh, fabrics. The clear nanoscale films on eyeglasses, the, the clarity is increasing. Now you are telling the different types of uh, eyeglasses, you know, uh, whoever is using eyeglasses, they may be knowing how the eyeglasses are being prepared and that the many coatings are anti-radiation coating, then say anti, you can say glare, anti-glaring. The, uh, the, the, when the raining is there, it should not uh, uh, split up the images. So for that, there is a special coating is given by the nanoparticles that is uh, called uh, eyeglass coatings. The computer and camera displays are also being coated with this in order to reduce the radiation uh, uh, hazard. Nanomaterials are beginning to enable the washable, durable, smart fabrics equipped with flexible nanoscale sensors and electronic capabilities of the health monitoring and solar energy capture and energy harvesting through the movement. Uh, so dynamic way you can uh, achieve the, uh, you can say achieve the requirement, whatever you need, you can, you need not to uh, position the thing in a stationary way. It, you can, you can carry on do your day-to-day uh, -day type of flight along with the is, uh, sensors which can capture the things and give you the relevant data. The nano bioengineering of the enzymes. Nowadays, uh, microbiology and you can say uh, biotechnology, where this type of things will be greatly used. Nano structured ceramic coatings exhibit much greater toughness. So, you can increase the toughness wherever you need toughness, that you can use the uh, coatings, nanotechnology, nanoparticle coating. Nanoparticles are used increasing in the catalysis to boost the chemical reactions. So there are chemical additives, chemical catalysts, chemical accelerators, which can be used in order to boost up the chemical reaction. So that is uh, the application. That is the day-to-day -day every material and process every day. Now, on electronics and IT applications. In electronics and IT applications, transistors, the basic switches, that enable all the modern computing. Nowadays, we are in the situation to use deliberately the computers, other related uh, data acquisition systems. So that has to be enormous power to acquire the data. You know? Otherwise, you will be expelled out. So you will not be having the uh, place to work if you don't know to operate the computers and, uh, and uh, related uh, uh, accessories along with. So that is very essential. So modern computing facility is being used with uh, uh, this one, nanotechnology. Using magnetic random access memory, magnetic random access memory, uh, computers will be able to boot almost instantly possibility. So otherwise uh, you have to switch on the computer, wait for 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Sometimes it will not come at all. So nowadays you can avoid this using the nanotechnology. Flexible, bendable, foldable, and rollable, and stretchable electronics are uh, uh, reaching into various sectors. So this is uh, uh, the functional application. Variety of products are coming out. 
so smart uh, mobile phones smart washing machines uh, smart uh, microwave ovens uh, which are extensively used nowadays uh, this is a day to day life we have fully depend upon these type of products now other computing and electronic products include flash memory chips and smartphones and thumb drives so these are all the some of the electronics and it applications where you cannot avoid you have to uh, either cope up with this or you have to fit the present community uh, medical application medical and health care applications where the following images are shown it is a bamboo like structure so nitrogen doped with carbon nanotubes for the treatment of the cancer so this is used for the treating the cancer only the cancer cell will be pinpointed and will be destroyed without uh, making any problem to the healthy tissues so that is to be ensured only by the nanotechnology now come to the health care application how the health care application is being uh, uh, faced nanotechnology is being studied for both uh, the diagnosis and the treatment both the way the nanotechnology is being utilized the design and engineering of the advanced solid state nano core materials allow the development of the uh, novel gene sequencing if the gene has to be sequenced novel gene sequencing technology is being introduced in the healthcare so uh, which align the the characteristics of the parents then nano medicines so researchers are looking at the different ways that nanotechnology can improve the vaccines and finally we can get the vaccines for the covid-19 situation research is aggressively going on in this the research is going on uh, and we expect uh, the vaccine may come uh, the end by the end of this year uh, research is the use of nanotechnology for regenerative medicine spans so the span life span of the medicine can be increased using the nanotechnology so these are these are all for the health care and the energy application just to see the energy applications new solar uh, plants incorporate nanoparticles to create the lightweight flexible solar cells and nowadays this is required it is a flexible adaptable adjustable accommodatable type of things are required so this is a flexible solar cell extensively used for the energy applications now i'll come to uh, the final portion of our uh, today's lecture now functional application nanotechnology is improving the efficiency of the fuel production and raw petroleum materials through the better catalysis so catalytic process is improved in the uh, fuel production then researchers are investigating the carbon nanotubes scrubbers and membranes to separate the carbon dioxide from the power plant exhaust see industries are having the power plants the exhaust are polluted the exhaust is having a polluted gases which is coming out that you have to separate the carbon dioxide uh, uh, from the exhaust if it is being extracted the remained is there is a residue of the exhaust can be used for some other application then an epoxy containing carbon nanotubes is being used to make the windmill blades vestas if you may be knowing vestas uh, uh, now it is being changed as a rrb windmills blade production uh, company windmill blade blades are being produced where the carbon nanotubes infused uh, frk composites or nano composites are used for the making the blades nano science based options are being pursued to convert the waste heat in computers automobiles and other power plants to the usable electric power so this also can be used from the exhaust the waste heat energy can be utilized for uh, electric power so this are all the some functional applications so environmental remediation how will you remedy the environment how will you recoup the environment because environmental is highly polluted today you could have come across in chennai and delhi uh, in the during the peak time last year and all the suspended particle in the uh, air is more air quality index aqi was very high why it is so because the polluted environment how will you re 
too quick uh, energy. So nanotechnology can be used to recoup the uh, environment. Controlling the industrial pollution, you can nanotechnology based air filters for the aircraft cables. Whenever you are using the uh, air filters, which which can give you the a few air, you can filter the air in the nano level. In the nano level, you can filter the air. Then another sensor has been developed by NASA as a smartphone extension that uh, uh, firefighters can use to monitor air quality around the fire. When there is a fire uh, uh, broke out, you can you can measure the quality of the air around the area. Uh, the the uh, area is given, but I will give the area how much is uh, around. Uh, we can check the quality of the air one kilometer in the circle. So that uh, uh, that can be possible by the uh, sensor. That and all the, the today uh, as on today this type of uh, research is going on. Now come to the future transportation benefits. The nano technology offers the promise of developing multifunctional materials. Uh, then a contribute to building and maintaining the lighter, safer, smarter, and more efficient vehicles, aircraft, spacecraft, and ships. So this is the uh, achievable by the nano technology, reducing the weight of a commercial jet aircraft by twenty percent. Uh, weight if you reduce the weight by 20 percent huh, then you can save the fuel consumption by 15 percent then the, then a preliminary analysis performed by the nasa has indicated that the development and use of the advanced nanomaterials which twice the strength of the conventional composites would reduce the gross weight of the launch vehicles by 63 percent so when you are using the nano materials for the structural applications which will reduce the weight by 63 percent who will not accept it so that is the thing of a nano composites now limitations limitation is of the nano composite what is the limitations everything is having a merits and demerits you know if merits are more demerits also there we have to know what is the demerit what is the demerit is nano air particles are reduce the sum of the functional characteristics. Then you increase the composition of the nanoparticle. It will reduce the property. So you should know how much is to be infused. That is very much essential. Then research will be necessary to develop a better understanding of the formulation, structure, property relations. Then uh, how to disperse the nanoparticle uh, homogeneously into a binder. That is also a challenging task. So that's the limitation now we are in the last uh, coming to the uh, yeah, uh, yeah an issue that is called the environmental health and safety issues you have to take these issues into consideration when you are making a material new novel material you have to see this environment health and safety next one is the ethical legal and societal impact or issues these things you should keep it in mind when you are making a material. So, uh, that is last of my lecture. Um, thank you for your attention. I conclude my lecture at this junction. Thank you all. I am in time to complete my lecture. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, I request our participants, if there are any queries, you please unmute and you can ask directly to our resource person. Or you can type, or you can type the question in the chat. Huh? Good morning, sir. Yes, myself. Yes, yes. Sir, please, sir, proceed, sir. Yes, anything, uh, anything. Someone wants wanted to start for me. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Very good, sir. Very good presentation. I would like to also congratulate you for your contribution for Air Force. For, uh, you are in the one of the team members for the Cargill war. We are very yes. proud, sir. Thank and you. also, sir, you have, you have given a very good lecture on the nano composites. Sir, yes. I had one doubt about this yes, nano composites. Once if you are uh, fabricated to the powder metallurgy route or from, from this steer casting, which is better, sir? 
can you throw some light over this yes it's uh, powder technology is a uh, is a very uh, effective to, to have a nano composite material for the application okay sir sir is this uh, suppose if you heat treat the uh, any uh, metal matrix composite and if you get some particulate reinforce can you call it as a, a nano composite yes uh, when you can call a nano composite one of the constituents must be in nano scale then only you can call it as a nano composite when you measure one of the constituents na then you are missing two constituents one is the nano particle or one is a particle another one is the binder this two are the minimum required constituents so one this uh, the particle must be having a nano size then only you can call it as a nano composite thank you thank you very much sir thank you thank you sir i request once again participants if you are having any queries please you can unmute yourself and you can ask our resource person or you can type the questions in the chat box so that uh, we can ask here hello sir yes. ah yes sir please sir, please sir. hello sir suppose we want to improve the static property of a composite material what kind of ingredients what kind of composition we can add it to get the good static yes, resistance yes. property uh, like you are, you, are, you are asking a typical question uh, you are mentioning static uh, property the static yes, is a, actually how we define a static static is nothing but the diminishing resistance towards the cyclic stresses you know that is called the static diminishing resistance the resistance will carry on reducing when you apply the cyclic stresses uh, what do you mean by cyclic stresses maybe a tension or compression together or a, um, a clockwise movement or uh, anti clockwise movement uh, simultaneously if we apply that is going to cause the cyclic stresses uh, the diminishing resistance towards the cyclic stresses is likely to give you the static uh, property uh, static uh, type of quality if if the resistance is diminished either in the tensile or compressive stress diminishing in the cyclic stress you are static you are going to lose the static property so you can you can include the non metallic uh, nano particles so there are two types of nano particles we discussed about one is the metallic nano particles another one is the non metallic nano particles <laughs> nano metallic nano particles like carbon nano particles carbon carbon nano cubes carbon nano crystals if you are using uh, that is definitely in a correct proportion you cannot use uh, as like we want it has to be used in a correct proportion uh, then definitely the static property will improve hello ah yes sir hello sir ये the nano okay. uh, then, then you are uh, selecting the metal oxide nano metal oxide particles you know you have to select the cheap and uh, low cost uh, materials you have to select so that availability yeah. is ensured as well as the cost is ensured uh, but one of the suppose if you want to make a nano composites out of this metallic oxides one of the constituents must be having a nano scale geometry so for example yeah. silicon carbide silicon carbide yeah. and aluminum oxide then you want to make yeah. a nano composite yeah. either aluminum oxide or silicon carbide should have a nano structure nano size okay then will you suggest sir will you suggest any uh, synthesis method uh, like uh, the the go for the powder metallurgy method or just no sara ask about the steel casting method yes sir normally the powder metallurgy is used with uh, metallic particles you know metallic particles are being uh, uh, injected into a surface at uh, uh, with high pressure and at the temperature then only it will deposit on the surface 
uh, when when you are uh, when you are using powder metallurgy for nano composite fabrication that is going to be the effective techniques one of the effective techniques as far as the nano composite fabrication uh, is concerned so you can use the powder metallurgy okay okay will you suggest any temperature sir uh, like yes yes uh, that is suppose if you are using using a uh, metallic nano particles suppose if you are yeah. using the uh, aluminum and silicon carbide you have to use 1700 degrees centigrade uh, at that time both okay. will infuse okay. so there is a specific temperature okay okay well, i am doing the same research regarding aluminum oxide yes, and you, going you to can yeah, because you should have the facility for heating up to that temperature that is only the required so what about pressure sir will you have an idea about pressure yes sir Pressure, sir. Pressure, pressure. Either I need to use either a cold compacting method or by uh, simultaneously I need to use the temperature and pressure. Sir. No, no. There, 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 there is a process. When you want to mix the aluminium oxide and uh, silicon carbide, yeah. Uh, then, then, then you want to mix it. There is a sequence of process. If you, you, you have to use the sonicator to mix first the both the powders, then okay. the both the powders will be exposed to the ball milling. Yeah. and to make the uh, uh, constituent in the uh, uh, nano particle size okay. then you have to go for uh, uh, temperature high temperature and pressure okay. then only the nano composite will be made there is a process steps you know you have to follow the steps. okay okay thank you thank you very much sir nice uh, thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you sir uh, sir i request all the participants please introduce yourself then you can ask the question sir uh, sir, one question is available in the uh, chat box, sir. Shall, shall I proceed, sir? Yes, yes. Uh, sir, we can treat uh, waste radioactive material uh, using uh, nanotechnology. Can we treat waste radioactive material uh, using yes, nanotechnology? Definitely, definitely. But the one thing you have to be very careful. Uh, I, I had uh, uh, in this one, uh, in Kalpakam, there is a uh, nuclear uh, base is there. In our uh, nearer to Chennai, there is a Kalpakam. The nuclear wastes are there. The nuclear wastes are being retreated now using the nanotechnology. But uh, the safety and other measures has to be extensively adapted. You have to adapt the measure, safety measure. Otherwise, you will be exposed completely to the radioactive radiation. So you have to be very cautious enough when you are retreating the uh, nuclear waste. So there is a, a, a high technology involving into retreating this uh, in a very confined uh, uh, enclosure it has to be treated and you have to ensure no ra radioactive uh, uh, radiation is coming and affecting the uh, other surround uh, environment that you have to ensure thank you sir uh, this is another question sir from uh, Mahabharata yes. can you explain uh, metrology or facilities used for nano composites uh, metrology and facility. Ah, metrology or facility. Ah, you for, for uh, nano composites. Uh, can you explain metrology or facilities used for nano composites? Oh, nano composite is made once once it is being made cheaply through some of the uh, techniques easily available techniques. Why do we go for the complication into the metrology? So uh, that is better, whichever is available, cheap and easy handling, that process and technique can be adapted in order to make the nano composites. That is my suggestion. Otherwise, nothing wrong in going through the metrology. Uh, thank you, sir. I think in the chat box, uh, no questions, sir. So myself, uh, I'm having one doubt, sir. Yes, sir. In the fabrication process, so you were explained two methods, sir. One first one is a compression mold, another one is a layer fabrication method. Uh -huh. There is a vacuum uh, assisting the resin transfer molding. There is one technique, yeah, yeah. another one okay, is compression molding. Yes. Okay, sir. In the compression mold process, one stage is there, sir. That is the evaporate uh, acetone stage. Uh -huh. uh, what is the stage, sir? Actually, uh, I know the compression mold uh, uh, fabrication process, but uh, uh, I don't know what is the evaporate acetone stage. See, actually, what happened, uh, as I told you, no, 
the nanoparticles are there are two uh, two stages of the nanoparticles one is the passive stage another one is the active stage of the nanoparticles you know okay. passive stage means that nanoparticle they cannot uh, contribute towards the enhancement of the quality that is uh, that, that is the uh, passive stage of the nanoparticle it has to be made into the active how will you make into the active there is an assist, acetone bath the nanoparticle has to be soaked into the acetone bath and okay. it has to be uh, treated for some time and it, the acetone has to be evaporated in a small oven uh, okay. at a small, uh, lesser temperature okay. when it just okay. in lesser temperature acetone will be evaporated only nanoparticles will be there that okay. nanoparticle is an active nanoparticle okay. so you are making the passive stage to the active stage by the acetone okay. bath okay thank you sir right Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, already we are extending our time limit, sir. Uh, shall I yes, go sir. for a vote of thanks, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your excellent presentation, sir. You have given uh, from the basic of uh, nano composite to the recent applications also. Everything. You have completed all those things from the basic, sir. It is very useful for the young engineers, the young scientists or professors, those who are going for the research. It is very, very useful for them, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, I request uh, all the participants, uh, please uh, um, again join with that uh, at two o'clock and for the next session, two p.m. Uh, please join before fifteen minutes Hello. before at one forty. Sir, 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 Guru Thai Prasad sir, please uh, uh, mute your mic, sir. I request all the participants, uh, please join. We will join again at uh, 1 45 p.m. for the next session. Uh, sir, uh, uh, Rajesh, sir, kindly uh, show the next session. Yes, uh, next session by Dr. Jayakrishna, sir, a professor from uh, PIT, Velour Institute of Technology, Velour. And the topic is Introduction to Nanomaterials. I request all the participants once again uh, to join at uh, after uh, lunch break. We will join once again 1.45 p.m. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.